By the nine, the white gold tower is dripping. Bye bye, merch. Enjoy the video. I remember the first time I ever saw Oblivion. It was at my family's farm, and I was watching my big cousin play it on a Frankenstein of a PC. I'd only ever played Morrowind and adored it, despite being young and terrible at it. Hey, why don't people like Morrowind? I watched as he was chased by Daedra towards a roadside inn. He entered inside, and I immediately relaxed, knowing the danger was behind us only to have my world shattered when the Daedra came straight through the door. I've been better. I know such a basic mechanic of the modern era, which often doesn't even have loading screens for houses these days, seems like such a weird thing to be amazed by, but in Morrowind, cell switching by NPCs almost never happened. Mm -hmm. Only just noticed that the end of this boat is like a tree that they're just kind of hanging a lantern on. Me, when I console command unlock the door. Oh. <laughs> NPCs simply remained where they were or wandered in a small area, never chasing you out of the cell. Only a few had schedules and mostly for quests as far as I know. This led to things like young me murdering terrorized Gavain because the guards could never come into houses. <laughs> I would then set up our home as my own and slowly integrate myself with the townsfolk. Every day, they'd peek in between the boards and the windows and wonder, where is Teresa anyway? And I'll open the door, and I'll look at them, and I'll smile and say, Howdy, neighbor. So enemies chasing you into cells blew my mind, and it's what made Oblivion so special to me. It felt like the first living world, and I know that sounds silly with how simplistic Oblivion really kind of is. But for a kid at that time, it was the best thing I'd ever seen. Enemies might follow you into an inn, and you can watch as the local populace gives them a very physical demonstration of why their drinks are so cheap. Oblivion had a few flashy things to show off its new NPC schedules and cell switching ability, including a dude in Anvil who's been riding the local bicycle. Sorry, Chads, but in Oblivion, the short king gets the weird elf. Seriously, like all of the quotes about her are just racism against wood elves. Greetings, Bosma. Yes? What's the news from the other parts of Tamriel? Nothing I'd like to talk about. See ya. Bye. Jesus Christ, what a flawless infiltration. Oh, hold on, speaking of, thank you. I'm Hasathel, Heinrich Oakenhall's wife. Take care. Well met. One of my favorite mods was 28 Days and a Bit Later, a mod that simulated a spreading zombie apocalypse where people actually got infected and spread the virus. It really made the world feel alive when a horde in one town might travel to another and threaten its survivors. I even played some of the sequels to that mod for Skyrim on the channel ages ago. Oh, the special edition. With the deaths increasing, the reports of hideous creatures in the snow coming from Bruma. Now what's going on up in Bruma, I wonder? Oh. Oh, this is going on in Bruma. Hey, protect and serve. It's what we do. What's the matter? Get what the fuck? Where I'm has the light gone? Why hath the gods forsaken us? I've actually never seen this happen before, and I'm fucking terrified. But there's a mechanic that makes the best use of this new ability of the engine, and it's one that I don't think many people know of. The mechanic that I adored as a kid and that inspired this video. The Goblin Wars. Yes, that's right, Oblivion has a hidden mechanic mentioned only in a single quest as far as I can tell. Goblin Trouble is a minor side quest that has you aiding a group of farmers who had their land swarmed with goblins due to ongoing ethnic tensions between the tribes. Tensions which involve warbands of goblins marauding through the hills, and collateral damage is not considered a sin in goblin culture, but a score to be beaten. Your job in this quest is to put an end to the war through all the usual different means. As a side note to further showcase the living world, once you complete the quest, the town actually slowly rebuilds and rewards you with gold every week, and I think that's cool as hell. Radiant AI. Oh, please. Real Stop. So how do these mysterious goblin wars actually work? <clears throat> well, there are seven tribes of goblins in Cyrodiil. There's actually more, but shut up. Each tribe has a lair, a shaman, a war chief, and their totem staff. 
Now let's see why most people don't even know this exists. First, to begin a goblin war, the shaman must be alive, which considering the average player is not a very high chance. Second, the totem staff must be stolen, which in some cases it already is with two tribes missing their totems and thus being at war at the start of the game. However, even worse is the fact that the totem staffs are often guarded by the shamans who die defending them. Because the average player likely never knew about the diverse interconnected religious system that the goblins strictly adhere to, including laying down all arms and showing the intruder who has slain your god avatar, Nanawate. 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 My god, he just overthrew the system! One recommendation is that after you decapitate their leadership and rip families apart, why not use the cave as a safe place to rest, guarded by your own theologically enslaved army? Third, the totem staff must be on the ground, not in your inventory, not in a container, and not sold. That last one is important because if there's one thing merchants in the Elder Scrolls love, it's rotting goblin heads on sticks. By god, you've struck gold. So after you blast a couple people with it, you sell the staff and make a shitload of money and the goblins go to war with the merchant guilds. Wait, what the fuck? This is just Elder King. If you've done all these things, if you've aligned yourself facing north, on the 11th of Heartfire, if you've smashed the like button, then you might have just started. A brand new race war. Oh, but don't make the mistake of trying against the bitter fish. There's actually more, but shut up. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Okay, which is a tribe you meet in the main quest, which has no war chief, no totem pole. Uh, it has a possibility of spawning multiple shamans, but they don't work like shamans. They are truly just a tribe in name. The shaman's death will not affect the stone cold hearts of those infidels. There's also this kinda unique goblin witch. This goblin witch also has a goblin shaman staff, but this isn't a goblin totem staff. Those are completely different things. And she's also not a shaman. What did Todd mean by this? Throw into the mix that the mechanic itself was buggy as hell and relied on NPCs that moved over land without the player being present, which was somewhat of a wacky system. Some people claim the code never existed, though those people seem to be very much wrong, and that Oblivion very rarely featured things like this, and it's not hard to see why most people would just never come across it. But I had, I found out about it, became fascinated with it as a kid. I remember the joyous days of goblins attacking the coolest house in the game, I have a castle gate, it keeps the bad things out. So what's my aim in this video? What was I trying to do? Well, this wasn't how it started, but by the end, I was trying to prove that the mechanic existed. I was going insane. I was trying to prove that I wasn't crazy. See, despite all of the posts you can find about the Goblin Wars, people asking about them or talking about them or how they do work, so many people say they have never worked. But others say that they did work even on console where it couldn't have been modded. Others say it's cut content that was never added in. Some say you just have to wait forever, way longer than you'd think, or that you must place the staff in a rival tribe's lair, not just in the open, or that there's a distance limit to it. And even the unofficial Elder Scrolls page, God bless, the wiki disagrees with itself as to whether or not they even exist or work. I'm breaking out the archives because even the game's own guide mentions it and by God, it's a treasure trove. It tells you how to return the staff that they respawned. It flirts with Maris, what the fuck? It tells you how to restart the war and that being near the settlers will cause the traveling goblins and the settlers to load in and therefore the goblins to slaughter the settlers and finally tells you about a free form quest. We'll get back to that one. It mentions that the raiding party will leave at nightfall. Notice the timing of this mod, which says it just uses the Goblin Wars code. Also, I like that the guide after this quest doesn't just like stay there and live with them. She actually goes back and becomes a deer hunter. This is the sort of shit that makes me love Oblivion. So what's a freeform quest? It's basically just a list of shit that you can do that isn't actually a scripted quest in the game, but still has some cool stuff about it. You know, some things like meeting an adventurer and just kind of 
hanging out with him while he loots money for a dude named Gortwog. Further in, simple. however is this fun with goblins it includes a lot of the info we now know but it doesn't mention what the shamans do strangely enough it includes a lot of ideas to spark the imagination and i feel this is where some may have fabricated their own memories from it's a very hard mechanic to figure out whether it's actually working or not because of the time delay that's if you knew the mechanic existed in the first place and that left me with one choice it was time to start fucking with their little idols. There are rats and goblins down there. But from what I've seen of you, I'm guessing you're an experienced barbarian. Jesus right? Christ, what the fuck is- You can't say that just because I'm green! Okay, stage one of the testing is complete, and I think I can resoundly say that it doesn't work with these guys. Which means I have two more things I want to try before I install patches and I start changing the game. I'm here to steal your floating staff. Thank you, I'll take these gems as well. I just want them because they're shiny. There's meant to be another goblin totem staff right here. I figured out what happened to the totem pole. It was actually rescued by those goblins, see? This is a goblin war! Hold on, let me, uh, let me pop some invisibility potions. And let me show you what a goblin war actually looks like. Here, the white skins fight the sharp tooth. And the important note here is that only the war chief is able to pick up the totem pole if it's in a foreign location. If it's inside of your own base, then other goblins are able to pick up the totem pole too. He's claimed the totem pole this time. The white skins have actually ended the war on their own. I'm impressed. So as you can see, he's going to try and get this out of here. And we're actually going to follow him. Goblin war parties are all centered around the war chief. He's the one that respawns every three days, just like all goblins, except for the shaman. Once he's done that, he can lead off a war party of berserkers and skirmishers. They'll return home if the war chief dies because they can no longer recover the totem. The mod uh, that I know of, I definitely played this mod as a kid because it was made back in 2008. Uh, I know this mod edited things so that the skirmishers could pick up enemy totems, uh, but that is not in the base game as far as I'm aware. In the base game, the skirmishers and the shaman can pick up the totem as long as it's in their own territory. Only the war chief can pick it up if it's not in their territory. Anyway, here we have the white skin goblin chief, and he's going to take us back to the coolest cave you've ever seen in Oblivion. Hey, look at this. We're back at the cave. We've found Goblin Jim's cave. We head into white skin city. Oh, oh my, stop, please. Every time I enter a door, I, because I'm following you. God damn it, I have to keep drinking my invisibility potions. This is another reason why Goblin Wars are almost never experienced by players. They practically require the player to not intervene in a war in which both sides are going to attack the player. So it's kind of hard for them to not do it, you know, not intervene and somehow screw the war up. <laughs> <laughs> So the Goblin War Chief is supposed to actually drop the staff. In some locations, it's known that dropping the staff will clip through the floor and then it flies out of the world. But the only reason I know that is because the unofficial Oblivion patch references this. So the Goblin Wars mechanic, as far as the unofficial patch is concerned, does exist? I, this is the weirdest mechanic, like, deep dive I've ever gone on, I think. You ever met Goblin Jim before? He's a Breton who is the shaman of this tribe. He is actually the shaman, except that in vanilla, without the unofficial patch, he won't correctly, uh, what do you call it? Work as their shaman. They won't go passive once he dies. There's about to be a bit of a gang war here. Here's the rock by the war chief. Here's the, uh, the bloody hand one coming in now. Is it going to be the guy who didn't bring a weapon to invade another cave? Or is it- Oh, it's, it's the guy with the mace who won. I'm kind of unsurprised on that one. All right, let's see if this goblin war is real or not. One week later. We've waited an entire week and no goblins have come. I have a few theories and we're going to try all of them. We're going to exhaust everything before we move on to patching. Because once I start patching... The, everything goes out the window. At that point, I'm basically just dealing with mods, and I kind of can't really say it's vanilla anymore. I'd lay odds that the war between the two tribes is because of a stolen tribal head. They call them tribal heads in dialogue, which is another name that's different. <laughs> it's not totem pole, it's not totem staff, it's now tribal head. So with hours of testing finished, I turned to mods to see if I could at least get the system working. 
I thought maybe people played with the unofficial Oblivion patch and still considered it vanilla, but you know, that maybe that fixed the problem. No. I thought it was going to be Mardigan's monster mod, also known as MMM, or potentially another equally annoyingly named mod, OOO. It didn't seem like it was either of those, and finally I turned to mods I knew would work. Given that every other option has been exhausted, I'm finally just going to go to the mod that seems to enable it. The reason why I didn't want to activate this is this is obviously very clearly a mod. If you've turned this on, then you're not playing vanilla. You know, at least the, the patches you can kind of get away with like, oh, it was still vanilla, but it was just patched to fix something that should have been in the game kind of thing. I could get that, but... Yeah, this is not exactly that. Instead, uh, Oblivion is intended to be capable of goblin wars between tribes who have stolen each other's totems. However, this is not fully implemented in the scripts and AI for reasons beyond me. There are ongoing wars between the White Skin and Sharp Tooth tribe, as well as the Bloody Hand and Rockbiter tribe at the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the game, but while you are supposed to be able to provoke your own wars between any tribes, or even all of them, this is not yet possible without modification. This is probably the most correct statement I've seen, which sounds weird to say, but remember that these posts are all from more than a decade ago. More than a decade, and I mean that very literally in that this mod was first released in 2006. So we're gonna use the beta. If this doesn't work, then all hope is lost. You know, the bell tolls for me. But uh, hopefully it does work, and if so, what's going to happen here is that we have the tribe totem staffs as before. Uh, if we steal a staff at 6 p.m. every day. The war chief of the tribe will determine whether or not their totem has been stolen. In case it's missing, they will set out an excursion to retrieve the tribe's lost staff. All of the goblins, save for the shaman, will accompany him. I don't know if this is true or not, because it used to be, at least in vanilla, it's just berserkers and skirmishers. The standard goblins don't accompany the, uh, the war chief. This may be changed. Uh, after the tribe's totem is retrieved, the skirmishers will stay behind for a short time to search for an enemy totem. This is, as far as I can tell, brand new behavior. I don't know of any reference to this in other documents or informational forum posts elsewhere, but this may have actually just been in the code and he may have just enabled it. Uh, that being, of course, Mr. Dr. Gamut himself, whose only mods, by the way, of the goblin war mods. I realized that I started this as like a let me show off a cool feature from a game I used to, you know, really enjoy. And it's now just a fucking conspiracy theory. And just to show how long it's really been, the last time I downloaded this beta mod was in 2010. Goblins, it's 6 p.m. Time for your tribal excursion. Ah! Goblin head picked up? What? Ayo? <laughs> I, I don't think you're allowed to do that, actually. Hey, the Skullbreakers are here as well. That's good, that's good. It means it's working. Well, given that we know it all works now, let's get to it. It's time to start actually engaging in Goblin Wars. Yeah, I know, it only took like two full days of work before I decided to just use the fucking mod. Oh my God, there's an entire Goblin attack on the Gates of Coral. This is exactly what I wanted. Yes! Men to arms! <laughs> Get him! Oh my god, this is a huge goblin! Look at this dude! This is uh, what MMM does. It adjusts the size of some monsters. Oh, I nearly clobbered you. Jesus, dude's name is Hairy Legs. It's the Rock Biters versus the Dust Eaters, but the Dust Eaters seem to have only brought their war chief. That was a uh, pretty one-sided fight. Oh look, the skirmisher just picked up the... Uh, Tribal to yeah, and there goes another one. Oh, oh, oh my god. This will be the richest skirmisher you've ever seen. He has all of the totems. The rock biters have secured every single totem. We've got the three feather on the left and the sharp tooth on the right. I think this is pretty obviously- Oh, hang on. Has the three feather got some reinforcements here? What are these guys? Are they all three feather? Yeah, looks like they are. Okay, they're having a big fight in the doorway. Meanwhile, I heard there was some goblin head picking up going on. Let's have a look what's going on over here. Oh my god! In the room, it's the Three Feather and Sharp Tooth War Chiefs fighting each other. Alone. Who shall win? Oh, it was... It was the Sharp Tooth. Kind of unsurprising on that one. Alright, but he is gonna steal his totem pole. And his tribe will be, I think, the first to successfully steal one in the... 
and get it out of here. A bit of an upset though. The three feathers won the initial engagement, not the sharp tooth. Which means the sharp tooth war chief is coming out into a three feathers army. Oh no, you poor boy. So close. Yet so far. I'm just establishing ethnic conflicts, then watching from the corner of the cave like, ee, I wonder who's going to win. Oh, the little war chief is getting bullied. Oh no, but it's all right, because the rock biter has a skirmisher here to help out. Here we go. This is, look at the little teeny war chief. Look at him go. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, and he's here to steal back his totem pole. Oh my God, he killed the war chief. Ooh, will the shaman live? No, the shaman's fucked. Ah, oh, and that's the defeat of the Skullbreaker tribe, never to be recovered. Ah, oh, well, guess I'll have to clean up. Hello. Oh my God, is that a small chicken? All right, well, our home is established. It's time to face off against the goblin hordes. A couple of those down on the ground, then we go up on the wall. We, uh, we keep an eye out for any little cheeky goblins intending on attacking our- Is that a fucking sheep? Hold on a second, what was that? <laughs> Get away from here! We're trying to siege! Get out of here! What the- WHO ARE YOU?! Oh, that was fucking terrifying. I just- Who are- Okay, you're a raider. Okay, right. Go There's just a woman on the side of a hill staring at me, and the moment I see her, she turns around and leaves. The goblins are here. Greetings, Orc. Uh, the goblins are inside! The goblins have breached the facility! Oh my god! <laughs> I don't even know which tribes these are! Okay, hold on. We have- Is that just- Okay, Sharp Tooth. Skullbreaker and Three Feather have all shown up. Oh my god! Okay, so somehow the Three Feathers spawned inside anyway. Not sure how this one occurred. Anyway, let's just kill these guys real quick. Oh, hello. Would you like to leave? No. Well, the three feathers were dealt with quickly. Anyway, let's, uh... Oh, who's this? Oh my god, another war chief just arrived. Oh, it's the Skullbreaker. Hello? Oh my god, more goblins are coming! Look at them pour over the hill! Oh my god! Get, get back to the gates! Fall back to the gates, damn it! <laughs> Oh my god! Kasalian, you need that bow in a second, mate, because there's a lot of goblins outside. <laughs> that was perfect. I could not have expected better than them just flowing over the hill. Open the gates! We must rescue the blacksmith! Sally forth! Yeah. <laughs> I just made him eat shit. I probably should drop all of the heavy stuff I'm carrying and uh, just actually fight, right? Look, I swear there is a good excuse for having uh, God Mode on this whole time. It's because I had 5,000 invisibility potions on me at any one point. Let me just cut down on that a little bit. Okay, maybe maybe even a bit less. Okay, that's a good number of invisibility potions. We can probably drop some other stuff too. I'm also going to take the Castalion and I'm going to put him on the walls. I can tell him to stand here and he should be able to fire down and actually kill goblins. Excellent work, Castalion. I hope you don't get shot by a goblin archer. That'd be a sad end to your story. Whoa. What the? Huh? 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 <laughs> I'm gonna go get another man at arms real quick. One second. Hello, does anyone have a bow? Your turn to take the position. I forgot how unnatural people looked in Oblivion. Why did your face look smoothed? I don't know how I've done this, but this is just pure white now. It's just a thing that's happening. I... You know... I think, I think I really had some rose-tinted glasses when it came to how well Oblivion actually ran when it came to, you know, bugs and such, because, dear fucking god, I'm finding a good few. What? <clears throat> what? Uh... So I was trying to figure out why the goblins weren't coming. <laughs> on, the, on the plus side, I have all of the different, uh... 
Black Horse Couriers now. There we go. That's nice. It'd be good for a read. You killed all of them? Uh, you know what? It was probably the horse that did most of it, frankly. Horses are quite tough. On the plus side, the castle's gained a new horse. That's pretty nice. Well, I think we're going to call it there. I'm like 97% sure that the mod has just broken and uh, the goblins will no longer come. That or something else is being screwy or they're getting like stopped along the way by something else or something like that. But either way, I'm having some <coughs> issues and frankly, Oblivion has crashed like three times in the last hour, so... I'm starting to get a little tired. Well, that is it for the Goblin Wars. Thank you all for watching. I know I can do a bit more with it, like I could repair it and just carry on, do something else, reload the save or something to when it was still working and and try and have them attack a different location, but I think we've gotten the uh, kind of gist of how these work. The biggest downside to them is that the mod, and I guess the base game itself, has no restrictor for them just appearing next to the totem because obviously when they're being transported in the overworld in the I'm like, when, when I can't see them, rather, they're not being moved normally. They're being kind of virtually moved, and so they just kind of appear there. I know it's crazy to want updates for a feature that doesn't even exist in the base game, but, uh, you know, having like a nice little circle of maybe like 300 meters around the totem where they stop, and then they have to actually walk the rest of the way to go steal the totem would be, uh, would be quite nice for making the wars a lot more fun. Despite this being an almost forgotten feature, I think it's probably one of my favorite AI features of Oblivion, and it's what I wish the game had so much more of. They care enough about these to wage perpetual war, and I think it's also a nice world building and lore thing, you know, the fact that a goblin war is just a natural disaster that can, like, occur. It's like, uh-oh, the, the tribes are at war again, guys. Watch out, roads aren't gonna be safe. There is so much more they could have done with it, and I really wished that Skyrim did more with it. As far as I know, Skyrim doesn't have anything like this at all. Its Radiant AI is better than Oblivion's for certain, but it's not good. But there was nothing quite as ambitious as Goblin Wars, and that's just... It's a, it's a real letdown that the later games didn't carry on with stuff like this. Building a living world is a challenging thing to do. Most games that try to make worlds feel lived in really just fail hard, but this is one of the few features that I think could really sell someone on this. Of course, I'm not saying specifically the goblins, but you could have all sorts of stuff with bandits and mercenaries and wars. I mean, the Skyrim had a civil war on, and it was all just scripted and instances and battles that didn't fucking matter and then just quests that was it why the fuck couldn't you do this there's a whole war mechanic in oblivion you could have done oh god it would be so cool imagine that storming camps to steal their fucking banner the camps attacking you back in return you get like an alert from your guys oh no the storm cloaks will be arriving in 12 hours you better get there and defend the camp I don't know. The main thing I like the most about it is that it doesn't actually need the player to be involved, and that is what is so interesting to me. That is what is so crucial. It tells a story without actually requiring the player to do it themselves. Because you can have situations in which you're just out in the wilderness, and suddenly goblins pour over the hill. It's incredible. That is just such a cool feature that I really, really wish that Oblivion had actually properly fleshed out. But... For now, I think it's just going to have to be a weird little footnote in a very weird little game that I appreciate quite a bit. Thank you all for watching. This was not quite the video I wanted to make. I wanted to make a one focused on the Goblin Wars, but then I realized I had to kind of, you know, <laughs> prove that they existed first and that I wasn't just, you know, hallucinating everything as a child. So, well, I, uh, I might have been in the end. Who knows? After all of this... We are left with the most horrifying possibility of all. That at some point, somewhere along Oblivion's life cycle, if every single person who spoke about this wasn't just lying on the internet about video games, which people used to do way more it feels like, and if all of them weren't mistaken, if anyone actually bothered to check if this mechanic was real, then there is the chance that this feature may have actually worked. Worked. At some point on some console or system at some patch, it may have been patched to work or worked from the start, and then another patch along the way may have broken it or reverted the fix and no one ever noticed. And now. 
I don't know what you expect me to do. I'm no fucking Inferno Plus, mate. I just write loops. Well, true, bitch. I ain't about to tunnel through the code of every Oblivion patch ever just to prove my child self wasn't, like, making shit up or confusing it with the mod and that it really worked on vanilla at some point somewhere. But, hey, if you did experience the system ever working as intended, that being more than just the two wars that are active at the start of the game, or if you have some footage of it working that you can prove isn't modded, I'd love to see it. Until next time, everyone. Cheers for watching.